hello guys so welcome back to this channel in our last video we were able to look at how to install and initialize cloud firestore on xamarin or android project so these were some of the information we were able to save on our database our firestore database but in this particular video we are going to be focusing on how to retrieve these records that we saved on our firestore database into a recycler view so what we are going to be doing will be to add a recycler view to display our data. So before I do that, I want to edit this um, layout so that we'll have more space to add our recycler view. Like I earlier mentioned, this tutorial is not focused on beautiful UI at all, but it's all about we being able to see how to make use of Fire, Firebase Firestore effectively. So I'm going to go ahead and define a relative layout here just to arrange our UI a little bit more. I'm going to call this to and paste it here. I'm going to change this to, to match parent and the height, wrap content. So if you're already good with UI, you could just skip this particular part and just go to where I started talking about how to start using it. I'm going to add some padding, 16 dp. So we're going to define a new recycler view here. So we're going to set the height to be match parent and the width to be match parent. And of course, our ID. Boom. So we have that. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to design our recycler view role, which we can quickly do. Like I said, it's not going to be anything fancy, just a bunch of text views. All right. So let's go ahead and create a new layout file. I'm going to call this role. Just going to be a bunch of text views. So I'm going to have the first test view. This will be, this test view will display our full name. So I'm going to call it full name test. Now we're going to go ahead and declare the same thing for our age, phone, and email, right? So let me go ahead and copy and paste this four times. So one last thing we need to do will be to add a view just to separate this. In the background, be E2, E2, E2. I'm going to add some margin to the top, at least 10 dp. Okay, guys, we are ready to rock and roll. Our recycler view row is ready. So the next thing we need to do will be to create our recycler view adapter. So I'm going to go to adapters and go to new. If you're actually using Visual Studio, this is created for you automatically. So I'm not going to go over how to make a recycler view. If you're wondering how you can make a very good recycler view, you can check out this video. I'm going to put the link to the video in the description so you can just click on it and watch the video so that you can get a full grasp of how to set up a recycler view. But for the case of this class, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to use Visual Studio and generate the code automatically. So if you're making use of Visual Studio, you can just go ahead and create that automatically. So before then, we need to first of all create our data models. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new data model. Like I earlier said, I like keeping things pretty organized. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it data models. So I'm going to add a new class. So this class will depict our users. So I'm going to click on new file, add a new class, empty class. I'm going to call this user. So we're going to define some members, right? So I'm going to say public string full name because the user will have a full name and the next will be the phone number and the next will be the email address the age so now that we have that we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get our recycler view adapter so to do that i'm going to add the adapter here so i'm going to add a new file i'm going to call this data adapter okay so when you click on add new item on visual studio you will see a template that reads recyclerview.adapter so when you select it this is what you're going to be seeing so visual studio will go ahead and generate this bunch of codes for you so this is the code that will implement your recycler view like i earlier said so if you're yet to get a full grasp of how to make use of recycler views i have a full video dedicated for that you can find it here by clicking the link maybe you could just use it to brush up your memory a little bit so guys let's go ahead and initialize our recycler view so the first thing we need to do will be to inflate our role so we have that out of the way there are some things we are missing 
I'm supposed to add parent and then false. Okay, so we'll have that out of the way. The next thing we need to do will be to go to our recycler view view holder, which is here, and we're going to declare text views, the text views that we have in our row. It's actually going to be full name, phone, email address, and age, just the way I have it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Test view. This should be full name, full name test. You'll have get set. So we're going to do the same thing for email test. Okay, so we now have that out of the way. Now the next thing we need to do will be to reference the declaration of our test views to the one we have in our row. So to do that, I'm going to come here and say full name test will be equal to test view item view dot find view by id resource dot id dot full name test. So I'm very sure that you're very familiar with this code. So I'm going to go ahead and replicate this for email, phone, and age, just to save us some time. Now, the last thing we need to do will be to go to our constructor and bring in a list of users. And also, we'll have to bind the users on bind view holder method as well. So to do that, I'm going to have to change this to, instead of having it as string, we'll have it as list, list of user. So let's bring bring in this namespace as well. It just changes to users list. So in our constructor, we're going to bring in a list of users as well. This will be data. So users list will be equal to data. So because of that, we're going to have to change this override item count to users list dot count. Okay. So now in our unbind view, this, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and I will say holder dot have my full name test dot test. This will be equal to, so as you can see, we are retrieving each item in the user's list depending on the position. So this was supposed to be user's list. Instead of having an item, we're going to go ahead and call it user. So we are selecting a single user from the user's list depending on the position. So I'm going to go ahead and say user dot full name. Boom. So guys, we have our recycler view ready to rock and roll. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to go to our main activity and retrieve the data from Firestore indeed, all right? So this is actually where we actually want to go from the beginning of this particular video. So now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and fetch the data. So I'm going to create a new method. I'm going to call it fetch data. So to fetch our data, we're going to go ahead and make a query. So to make our query, I'm going to say database.collections. The collection we want to retrieve the data from is our users collection. So we'll add users and we'll say get. Now, after this, we're going to add on success listener. This means that we need to go ahead and implement I success listener to this class. Most of the time, I always want to have this implementation on a separate class. But for the sake of, you know, brevity, I can just go ahead and implement it in this class. So now the next thing we need to do will be to implement the I on success listener interface. So I'm going to go to the top of our activity and I'm going to implement I on success listener interface. Boom. Okay. So this is actually where we are going to be retrieving our, our items. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up. So the result we have here is going to contain all the users that we have on our users collection. All right. So the result is going to contain all of this. Now, what we need to do at this point would be to loop through each of these data and retrieve each of the fields and add it to a list. So to do that, we're going to say, the snapshot this will be equal to query snapshot result so what we are doing here is that we are converting the result to a query snapshot so the next thing we need to do will be to say if not snapshot dot is empty so we need to ensure that our snapshot is not empty the next thing we need to do will be to convert our snapshot to document so i'm going to say var document will be equal to snapshot dot document now the next thing we need to do will be to create a loop so we're going to say for each document snapshot item in document guys what we are doing here is that each document represents a document snapshot for instance 
this is a document snapshot this is a document snapshot this is a document snapshot all of these snapshots are aggregated and returned to us in the result so it is now left for us to loop through each of them and retrieve our fields so let's go ahead and continue with that so at this point we are going to define a new user so i'm going to say user 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 <laughs> is equal to new user so user dot full name will be equal to item dot get so at this point we are going to get the field part now the field part for our full name is full name so this is actually why we are using field name in the parentheses so we're going to convert it to string boom so this will go ahead and retrieve the full name for the first item in our document snapshots so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing when we are retrieving the email but I must warn you that because this is a no SQL database, you might actually want to check for null before you go ahead and retrieve the items, which I'm going to show us how to do just now. All right? We're going to go ahead and verify that this is not equal to null. So we're going to add this. It's not equal to null. Okay, so this is a very wonderful C sharp shorthand. So what I'm actually meaning by this statement is that we first of all have to check if the email field part is not null and if it's not null, we'll go ahead and retrieve our email and convert it to string. But whilst it's null, we're just going to go ahead and return an empty string to this assignment statement. So let's go ahead and retrieve our phone and age. So the next thing we need to do will be to add this user instance to a list, right? But currently we've not defined the list. What we need to do will be to define a list of users globally. So we're gonna have, I'm gonna call this list of user. This will be equal to new list of user. Okay. So at this point when we are retrieving our items and we are running a loop, I'm gonna have to clear the list first of all list of user dot clear in case we have some items in the list before now so at this point we're gonna go ahead and say list of users dot add user boom now we successfully retrieve the items from database now the next thing we need to do will be to inject it in our recycler view so we're gonna go to the top we're gonna define a new instance of recycler view I'm going to call this recycler view now the next thing we need to do will be to reference our recycler view. Boom. So our recycler view is well referenced. So we're going to go ahead and create our recycler view adapter. We're going to make it a global variable as well. So this will be data adapter. Data adapter. We're going to call it data adapter. So we're almost ready to start viewing our items there. I'm going to go ahead and create a new method. So this method, I'm going to call it setup recycler view. So at this point, I'm going to say recycler view set layout manager. So here we're going to say new linear layout manager and recycler view dot contest. And we're going to say data adapter will be equal to new data adapter. And we're going to pass it list of user. It's supposed to be a list of users and lastly we're going to say recycler view dot set adapter and we're going to pass it our data adapter lastly we're going to go ahead and call these two methods in our onCreate method all right so at this point we're going to go ahead and say fetch data and set up recycler view so guys let's go ahead and verify that everything we've been doing so far is going to work out Let's go ahead and run our app and see it in real action, okay? So our app is debugging. Boom. And this, uh, this is our data from Firestore. So I'm going to open this side by side. So this is the first one. Okay, so this is the first one. As you can see, 12 years old. So this is my data. The next one is Joy Lugard. This is Joy Lugard. And this is it. Anthony Grad. So guys, this is just how to go ahead and retrieve items from Firestore. Let me try and add a new user to my database. 
So I'm going to call this person Nancy. And the age, I'm going to save this. And I just added a new data. But funny enough, it didn't show up in our recycler view just yet, except we reload. So in the next video, we are going to be looking at how to add snapshot listener to our Firestore in such that when we add a new piece of information, it will automatically reflect on our app. But this is all we'll be doing for now. Guys, hope you really enjoyed the video. If you've learned something new, don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video. And if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, do well to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you can always get notified whenever I make this kind of video. But for now, peace out. Catch you later.